The Pico W is a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connected device. The real fun for me comes when we connect it to bigger systems and services. So allowing the Pico W to be a client of the web services to inform a server that someone has pushed a physical button, or perhaps it's simulating a human at a telnet session, issuing a command on the server. Perhaps the Pico W uploads a log file of sensor data to an FTP server, or the Pico W is an IoT device connected to an MQTT broker. All of these protocols use TCP IP socket communications. In fact, when I started writing down a low level list, I quickly find that most of the internet communications we use each day use TCP IP sockets. There are alternatives such as UDP and ICMP, but relatively few services use these. I've done a video previously on SNTP, Network Time Protocol, and that uses UDP. A large number of internet protocols we might use on the Pico W use TCPIC sockets. So when we port these libraries, we need to be familiar with how sockets work on the Pico W, because the sockets will be part of the communication stack in our application firmware. The communication sockets between the Pico W and the server is part of the stack for Telnet, FTP, HTTP, or MQTT. In this video, I'm going to talk through a socket communication using LWIP library that comes with the Pico SDK. To operate sockets easily, we also need a multitasking framework. So I will also use FreeRTOS. The example will do an HTTP GET from the web protocol that serves a web page. We can then use it to pull a single page and print the results on standard IO on the Pico. So let's get going. This video is sponsored by my friends at PCBWay. PCBWay are your go-to solution for PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding, all your maker needs. So when I'm designing my Pico W project boards, I can upload them and get quality PCBs produced by PCBWay. You can see some of my boards that they've made for me in my other videos. So go check out PCBWay now, or wait until after the rest of the video. To operate the HTTP GET, we use a few libraries. All the code I'm going to talk about will be on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description below. We use our Pico SDK. We're going to need the interface into the CYW43 Wi-Fi controller to make our internet connection. Then the LWIP library, which is shipped within the Pico SDK, will provide our socket interface. We need to do a little configuration on this to use the socket library. The socket library relies on a multitasking framework and we'll use FreeRTOS kernel to do this. I'm taking a simple example and just using the single core here. I've done other videos showing multi-core use with FreeRTOS. So on FreeRTOS, we're going to use a vanilla project setup with the standard set of port configurations I tend to use on my projects. You can find the configuration options I set in the port FreeRTOS kernel folder in the example. I'm going to write just two threads in this example. The first is the boot or main thread that I use just about all of my projects. It's what I use to set everything up and run some background monitoring. Then the test thread is really going to do the work. It will undertake the socket connection and HTTP GET process. I'm not going to go into detail on free RTOS within this video, as we are focusing on sockets. I do have a Udemy course, which covers the whole of the free RTOS kernel library for the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico W, or any other RP2040 board. I'll put a link in the description below. Sockets are provided by the LWIP library, which ships with the Pico SDK. The code is all in the Pico SDK lib folder if you ever want to review it. By default, the sockets are not enabled, so we'll need to provide a port configuration definition file to turn these on and change a few of the defaults. The sockets need some buffer space to work, and we need to provide this. 
the socket library is going to use threads from the FreeRTOS kernel library. We need to make sure that the socket threads have a higher priority to maintain the socket, so giving it a priority of two here. Also providing stack size for the TCP IP thread. The default size, as you can see here, is 1K. I found this is a little too small, so had to make this larger for a lot of my code. The rest of the files contain some other standard definitions for LWIP. Go take a look. To do the HTTP GET, we're going to need to go through this process from a socket perspective. That is once we are connected to the internet and have an IP address. First, we need to convert our server address into an IP address using the DNS service. Then we use the IP address to open a connection to the target port. Through this open socket connection, we can then send the get command. Then read the HTML page that is sent back as a response. And finally close the socket. The way I'm going to provide these functions is to place them into a transport layer as a C++ class. I'm going to use a standard interface called transport. Though in this video, I'm only talking about TCP sockets connections and the TCP transport class. A future video is then going to secure this using TLS. In fact, the example already has this in included, but that's a spoiler for the next video. So the class here really has the basic functionality for our process. Connect will do the DNS lookup and open our socket. Then we can send out the get request read our HTML page and close our socket. So our first challenge in building our connection is to do a DNS lookup of the target hostname of our server. This will then give us the IP address to connect to. The LWIP library has provided us with the function DNS get host by name to do a DNS lookup. This function takes a callback function to call on completion of the lookup and therefore runs in an asynchronous way. For our purposes, we don't want to run asynchronous. We want to do the DNS lookup and wait for the response, or timeout with an error. So we use a semaphore from FreeRTOS to serialize this callback, i.e. once we've called get host by name, our code will wait for the semaphore to be given. And if it does not turn up within a few seconds, we'll time out. The semaphore we will give from the callback function trigger. I have a whole section on semaphores from FreeRTOS kernel in my FreeRTOS course for the Pico. So our transconnect function looks like this. We initiate our DNS lookup with DNS get host by name. Then we wait on our semaphore, logging an error if we time out. Once we have the IP address, we call the private member function transconnect with no parameters to handle the TCP IP connection. We passed the static member function dnscb to our DNS get host by name function and also a pointer to the current object, this. dnscb as a static function simply passes control over to the DNS found member function. dnscb knows what the transport object is as we pass the information into the callback. So it can then pass all the parameters through the DNS found. The DNS found member function will copy the IP address into a member data item for the object and give the semaphore. So we have our IP address and we can proceed to open the socket. By the time we reach the transconnect function, we have an IP address and a port to connect to. So we can set up our socket using AFINet address space, basically using IP addresses. Then we want socket stream, a TCP IP socket. There is then some structure set up for a server address to connect to before we use the LWIP function connect to connect to the socket. Once the socket connection is open, we can start the HTTP protocol and its get request. So let's look how we can send the data. The transcend member function will be a wrapper around LWIP write function. We have access to our connect socket via the object member data item X socket. We'll return the number of bytes read as the output. 
write will return a negative value on error. How about reading the socket then? So we can pull back the HTML page or HTTP protocol response. Receive is very similar and wraps the LWIP read function. Once again, we have access to our socket reference in the member data item X socket. We return the number of bytes read by the function, a zero means no data was read. Negative values mean an error or warning has occurred. In testing, I've got some negative numbers back from read when in fact no error has occurred. So I've resorted to checking the value of error number to make sure an error has really happened. Only if there is truly an error do we pass back a negative value. Our actual demo code is actually in the class test trans, which is going to test our transport. This is going to make a connection to my company website, drjohnea.co.uk. It is going to use the standard HTTP port of 80. Then simulate a web browser request with the get HTTP protocol request. My site, like lots on the internet, only actually return web pages for secure HTTPS connections. So what I expect to get back is a redirection request to the HTTPS site. So here is the test code from the test trans class. We have some setup here on the left of the host to connect to. The port number, the get request, along with a buffer to read data into. Then we can use our TCP transport object to make the connection to our host. On the right, we send the HTTP get request, checking that we sent enough data. Then we have a loop that will read all of the data reported back. Once no data is returned, we'll close the socket. I've built a little project to demonstrate this over on my GitHub repo area. I'll put the link in the description. The example does a little more than just the HTTP GET request I have just talked through though. It of course also does some Wi-Fi connections. It also does an HTTPS GET request and builds a secure um, socket to do so. I'll talk through that next time. Using Minicom to observe the standard out, we can watch what our device is going to do. We can see it connect to the network. Then the HTT get request is sent and the response comes back, which is that redirect, which is a pass for our tests. Understanding sockets is really important to make use of Wi-Fi capabilities of the PicoW. They're the basis for so many internet protocols for connectivity. I use the same approach from this example to build sockets to run the MQTT protocol on, the basis of most IoT systems. My course on Udemy, IOD for the Pico W, talks through how to use these sockets and provide them to third party libraries to provide a connection to MQTT brokers. As soon as you enter the connected world, you have lots of things going on at once. It therefore pays at this point to have a real-time operating system framework running on the Pico, something that will allow us to run concurrent tasks and communicate between them. I've used FreeRTOS kernel to do that in this video. If you want to learn more about this, then why not check out my Udemy course on FreeRTOS on the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'll put links to both courses in the video description. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. Please click like, subscribe and hit the notification button to hear more content from me. Coming very soon, I'll talk through how to secure the socket using TLS. Don't miss it.